press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Hello, this is me, Dr. Satish Bhatt again, and it's great being here for an episode of our Diabetic Care India channel. I'm sure you watched and enjoyed our previous episodes. In this episode, I would like to touch upon what is called glycosylated hemoglobin. In short, it's referred to as HbA1c or glycated hemoglobin or glycohemoglobin. Please note that all these names mean one and the same thing. So it could be glycosylated hemoglobin, it could be glycated hemoglobin, glycohemoglobin or HbA1c. In recent years, HbA1c has become one of the most important and one of the most relevant tests that we do to diagnose and treat diabetes. So what is HbA1c? Why do we need to do it? Why is it considered more important than many other tests? And is it perfect? Is it the most accurate that we have? These are certain questions that we'll try to find the answers to during this episode. All right, so the first question would be, what is or what exactly is this HbA1c? Assume that you were to take a metal nail, the one of those common nails that we use at homes, and leave it in the open for a few days. What would happen? Yeah it would rust. So where did this rust come from? I'm sure all of you know the answer. The rust came because the iron in the nail reacted with the oxygen in the air. So you have left the nail exposed to the oxygen. The oxygen is go going to uh, react with the iron that is present in the nail. And that is what we see as ferric oxide, which is nothing but rust. You agree with me? Yeah, so just keep this in your mind when we talk uh, further. <clears throat> so in our bodies, we have blood. We all know that. And the blood contains, in the blood we have what is called hemoglobin. We all know that, right? And all of us have glucose too in our blood. We all know that. So it follows that we have both hemoglobin as well as glucose in our blood. Now, glucose is a very, very, very restless thing, you know. The moment it comes in contact with other molecules, it will start reacting with them. It starts forming all sorts of complex stuffs with them. So, glucose is a very restless fellow, very active and restless and fidgety. So, this glucose, what it does is, it starts reacting with the hemoglobin and forms a irreversible complex known as a glycosylated hemoglobin. So does this ring a bell? So glycosylated hemoglobin can be present in non-diabetics. Did I just say that? Of course I did. Glycosylated hemoglobin is present in every human being. It's not like I have glycosylated hemoglobin and therefore I am a diabetic. No. But there is a cutoff, just like there is a cutoff for your blood sugars, there is a cutoff for glycosylated hemoglobin or HbA1c, an upper cutoff. So under normal circumstances, it shouldn't exceed this upper cutoff. So please remember that HbA1c is perfectly normal. It doesn't mean that you have a disease. Just because you have HbA1c doesn't mean that you are a diabetic, as long as the HbA1c is below that cutoff. So what is this cutoff we are talking about? Generally speaking, when we talk of an HbA1c cutoff, we look at 6.5 percentage. So in India, HbA1c is still expressed in terms of percentage. But in many countries around the world, nowadays they are expressing HbA1c in terms of 
moles per mole all right so you have millimoles per mole of uh, hb so please keep this in mind you might have reports that show percentage points which is most common in india as well as millimoles per mole so uh, i'm not going into that part right now because we are talking about indians so let's confine ourselves to the percentage uh, reports of hba1c so how much does it roughly turn out to be so yes in pre diabetes so now kindly pay attention here in pre diabetes we would want the hba1c to be less than 5.6% to 6.4% so anywhere between 5.6% to 6.4% is considered pre diabetes but anything less than 5.6% is non diabetic so you can be happy you can rest assured that you are not a diabetic if your hba1c is anywhere less than 5.6% but if it is between 5.6 and 6.4 then you are a pre diabetic now why do i touch upon this pre diabetic part so much it's extremely important believe me because pre diabetes is that stage wherein you can actually reverse completely you can actually reverse your diabetes completely into the non diabetic category you can become a total non diabetic if proper steps are taken during your pre diabetic status in fact we'll be talking about pre diabetes in a subsequent episode so right now suffice it to say that if you are a pre diabetic your hba1c would be somewhere between 5.6 and 6.4 but if your hba1c is above 6.5% then you are a diabetic hba1c above 6.5 diabetic between 5.6 and 6.4 pre diabetic less than 5.6% non diabetic so that's the way to remember it so one beauty with hba1c is that you don't need any fasting to get it done you can get it done at any time of the day or the night that's very convenient isn't it yes it's more expensive than our usual uh, blood sugar tests slightly more expensive but the prices are indeed coming down so uh, nothing to worry and since hba1c reflects the average blood sugar over 2 to 3 months you need to get it done only once in 3 months you don't need to get it done every day or every week or every fortnight or even every month it's enough you get it done do it only once in 3 months because it reflects the average blood sugar levels over 2 to 3 months you don't need to do it daily or weekly or even monthly and if your blood sugars are extremely well controlled then you will need to do it only even even less frequently less often so maybe once in 6 months would be good enough if your blood sugars are excellently controlled so it works out to be cheaper in the long run doesn't it so don't worry about the high cost of hba1c uh, compared to the blood sugar levels it is extremely important that you get your hba1c tested as per your doctor's advice i think we have touched upon almost everything about hba1c that a lay person needs to know i am not being technical here i am trying to keep it as simple and practical as possible in case you have any queries you are welcome to ask them in the comment section and please do like uh, this video and do subscribe to it and then yes please press the bell icon for the notifications thank you very much press the bell icon on the youtube app and never miss another update.